recently discussed the concept of a rootful X Whaler window, which basically allows you to embed a full X11 session inside of a Whaling compositor. And one of the things I said would be really nice to have is a really lightweight and really stripped down Whaling session so you don't have as much overhead when trying to do this. Turns out that already exists. And while it's really good for this use case, it wasn't actually made for this. So there is a Wayland compositor called Cage, which describes itself as a Wayland kiosk. Now imagine many of you probably not heard kiosk used in this context before. What in the world is a window manager kiosk? So it is designed to limit the scope of the user interaction to a single scope. That scope being a single maximized application. So if you think of the kiosk you'd see in your day-to-day -day life, let's say a cash register or a shopping terminal, or maybe you're buying something from the self-ordering at McDonald's, when you go and use these kiosks, there is a single application on the screen. No matter what you do, assuming everything is working properly, you can't get off that application. That is the only place that you can interact. So the way it works is very simple. Now I'm going to be embedding this inside of an X11 session just because it makes capturing it much, much easier. But if you're running this as your whaling compositor, you're launching it from the TTY, things like that, it's going to work in the exact same way. So if we go and run cage and then pass in the application that I want to have inside of the cage, let's say something like PC Man FM, for example. So this file manager is going to work exactly the same way as it otherwise would, but it's actually running inside of Wayland. So we can do all of the normal stuff we can do, and if we go and close this, then it'll go and close the compositor as well. Now, if you want to just make sure that it is actually, you know, running inside of a Wayland compositor, let's go and open up a terminal, and on pfetch here, you'll notice it says WL Roots Window Manager. And earlier I mentioned it'll replace Windows when you open up a new one. So a great example of this is with something like LibreOffice, for example. So when you first open the application, you see the loading screen. Then you see the, I guess, the selection of which tool you want to use. And then from there, it'll go and open up the writer itself. Now, if there was a way to go backwards in this order, it would go back to the previous application. So for example is you're playing a game. So you open up Steam, you open the game, and then you close the game, it'll take you back to Steam. Now, when this is running as your actual compositor, the window is going to be very limited in what it can actually do. So there's no way to move the window, resize the window, minimize or unmaximize or any of the other general sort of window manager features you'd sort of expect to be there in most other systems. This is entirely designed on running this one application and always having it full screened. It's definitely not perfect. Some programs, especially programs based on older frameworks like GTK2, for example, don't always play as nicely as you'd expect. So one of those programs being GIMP. GIMP will open just fine. And if you want to go and like open up a recent file, also works perfectly fine. Where it tends to fall apart is anything that has an interface that has to sit over the top. Let's say you want to do like a Gaussian blur. So you can't actually select anything in here. I don't believe this is a problem specifically with Cage. I think this is actually a problem with GTK2 not ever being made with Wayland in mind. I know GIMP does work fine in Sway, so maybe there are problems related to Cage itself. What I do know is that older applications like this don't really play nicely. Now, I want to make something very clear. Cage is not a sandbox. Even when you're running it as your actual compositor, if someone goes and closes it, for example, it'll take you back to the TTY perfectly fine. If you have some application that is going to like monitor your inputs and things like that, Cage doesn't care. All Cage is, is a way to run a single maximized application, and that is all. Like the name Cage would suggest, if you have the key to the cage, you can leave whenever you want. However, I could imagine someone using that concept as sort of the basis for a sandbox. So let's say whenever you open something in that compositor, it was always being opened in something like Fire Jail, for example, or App Armor, or whatever other sandboxing application you think of using. That I think would be really cool, but that's not what this is. Back at the start, I mentioned Root for Lex Wayland. So this does support 
full X Whalen, which means that we can go and do things like, say, open up X Wayland and then put it on display 12, for example. It's going to have a completely black screen here, but if I go and open up a, another terminal and then on display 12, I go and put something, not sway, let's put something different. Let's put something like X term, for example. It is going to go and open up inside of that window, and we can use a root for window here. So in this context, I could do something like, say, open up a cage inside of X11, and then inside of the cage, open up an X session, open up a cage, and then open up an X session in that. Terrible idea. Absolutely awful. Please don't do that. But you can do it. Along with apps like GIMP not really playing well, when you open up an app that doesn't like being opened in full screen mode, that is also going to act a little bit strangely as well. One of those being my main day-to-day -day terminal, Alacrity. So when you open this up in a normal window manager and you force it into full screen, if you go and unfull screen it and then full screen it again, everything's going to be fine. Here, though, that's not exactly an option. So you're going to be left with this white border around the edge of it without any way to actually fix it. This is a very known problem at Alacrity. It's been known for quite a while and just hasn't really been fixed. It's just that in everything else, you can work around it because you have the ability to unfull screen and full screen. Cage, you don't have that option. So when this is running as your actual compositor, it is going to support multiple displays. Support in the loosest definition of the term. So if you have multiple displays plugged in, it is going to render on all of the displays. But it's not going to have any way to actually configure the displays. So however that display runs out of the box is how it is going to run, which is generally fine for most displays. So if you're using something that is a 60 hertz display, it'll probably be at 60 hertz. If you're using something above that, eh, probably not. Most displays will default to 60, usually 1080p as well, unless it's some like weird knockoff monitor that has a messed up edit table. It is also going to support hot plugging. My recommendation though, is never run this with multiple monitors. So the default mode is to basically just stretch the compositor across all of the screens. It doesn't let you open a second application. It just stretches that one application across everything, which for some things is probably fine. But when it's things like a rich text editor, a image editor, an image viewer, anything like that, it's not a great experience, especially for me, because one of my displays, actually two of them now, are vertical displays. My recommendation is very simple. Turn off the displays that you are not using. If the display is turned off, it is not going to be picked up by cage. And if you are using a vertical display as the display you want to appear on, that can be addressed as well. So if you pass in the dash R option, this is going to rotate the display once counterclockwise, I guess and every R up to three is going to rotate an extra 90 degrees. So if you want to have it rotated the other way, it would be three instead. Now a kiosk might sound completely useless for general day-to-day -day use, and outside of embedding an X session inside of it, for most things it probably is, but it does solve one very simple problem. Let's say you're someone who tends to get really distracted. Let's say you're trying to write an essay, you're trying to do some research or anything that you're trying to do. And whenever you start doing stuff, you get distracted by Twitter or YouTube or Twitch or whatever else it is. Well, if you've just got your document editor or you've just got your text editor, or you've just got an image editor or a video editor or whatever else you've got open, and that's all you can physically open, well, unless you have your phone near you, there's no way that you can possibly get distracted. Sure, you can always go and close it and then reopen your regular session, start doing stuff like that, but the amount of effort it takes to do that, you're probably going to give up doing that and just go back to work because working is just easier than dealing with getting lazy. 
Now, when it comes to things like the Wayland protocols, Cage doesn't support every single protocol because a lot of them just don't really make any sense for something like a kiosk. If there's a protocol that you want to suggest, you can go and suggest it on the GitHub. The dev will consider it, and if you want to go and implement it yourself, then maybe the dev will consider it more. But right now, it supports idle inhibit unstable v1, org KDE KWIN idle, server decoration, WLR export DMA buff unstable v1, WLR gamma control unstable v1, WLR screen copy unstable v1, XDG decoration unstable v1, XDG output unstable v1, and XDG shell. That tech stump may have meant literally nothing to you, but if you're using an application that requires one of the extended protocols, generally the developer will say, hey, this is what you need to have to make sure this is going to work. Cage is a very bizarre compositor with a very bizarre use case. And even if it's not something I would use every single day, it has a hyper-specialized use case. This is part of the reason why I'm starting to get interested in Wayland. Things like this, even if they're kind of useless for most people, are really, really cool. So let me know, what do you think about Cage? Is this something you would ever consider using? Or maybe you're already using it and it's been great for you. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, to and Barapay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be... I'm not restarting that. Bye. I'm out.